The Pokemon TCG was sent into an unrecognizable state when Mewtwo EX became the name of the game. If you were to ask Pokemon TCG players what they enjoy about the Pokemon card game, they'd probably tell you things like battling with their favorite Pokemon, innovating with interesting cards, and evolving their Pokemon to implement strategies. A problem arose for this when Mewtwo EX was so strong that it was the best Pokemon to play and also the best way to counter opposing Mewtwo EXs. This created a metagame which felt stale, uninventive, and lacking strategy since the strongest card in the format was a basic beat stick. To understand the drastic changes to the competitive environment that took place when Mewtwo EX was released, let's review some of the years prior to Mewtwo's domination. Using the annual World Championships as the benchmark for each year's standard format, let's review the 2010 World Championship Masters Division standings. Within the top 16, we see 8 different archetypes, the most frequent being Luxury Garchomp, which won the event and had 5 additional spots in the top 16. Although Luxchomp was an aggressive deck which focused on level X versions of basic Pokemon, it did not chase slower decks out of the metagame completely. Gardevoir Gallade, which placed second at Worlds, relied heavily on Stage 2 Evolution Pokemon, as did 3rd place Kurskar and 14th place Abomasnow Ampharos. Next year at the 2011 World Championships, SP Pokemon like Luxray and Garchomp had rotated out of the format. At this event, every single deck in the top 32 utilized Evolution Pokemon. From David Cohen's first place Magnabore, focusing heavily on Magnazone and Embor, to Ross Cawthon's second place deck The Truth, using Vileplume and Reuniclus, to various Stage 1 attackers such as Yanmega Prime, Donphan Prime, and Zorark. Even decks using Reshiram as the main attacker were supported by Typhlosion Prime and Ninetales. The following year, 2012 Worlds would end up looking drastically different. On February 8th, 2012, the expansion Next Destinies was released in North America. It was advertised to contain powerful new Pokemon EX, such as Reshiram EX, Zekrom EX, and Mewtwo EX. These Pokemon EX were notably different from the EX Pokemon which existed in the card game between 2003 and 2007. The lowercase EX Pokemon of the past followed typical evolution rules. For example, Lapras EX was a basic Pokemon because Lapras does not have evolutions. Magcargo EX evolved from a regular Slugma card. Gardevoir EX evolved from a Curlia, which evolved from a Ralts. This may all seem obvious, but in the 2012 iteration of the EX mechanic, all EX Pokemon were basic Pokemon, regardless of their evolutionary stages in the franchise. Although the topic of today's video is Mewtwo EX, which wouldn't have to evolve regardless of this new design ideology, the new wave of uppercase EXs marked a shift in card design to make gameplay easier and faster. Next Destinies introduced 6 legendary Pokemon in the form of the new EX mechanic. Shaman EX, Reshiram EX, Zekrom EX, Kyurem EX, Regigigas EX, and Mewtwo EX. Five of these cards ranged from underwhelming to sometimes playable, and one would send waves through the TCG which would affect years and years of future card design and gameplay. Mewtwo EX, a basic psychic type Pokemon with 170 HP. Notably, it's weak to itself, which we'll get into a little later. Its first attack, X-Ball, is the one that matters. You can forget about Psy Drive. X-Ball costs 2 colorless energy and does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon and the defending Pokemon. One could argue that without double colorless energy in standard format, this attack wouldn't be so impressive. But double colorless energy was already in format due to the Heart Gold Soul Silver reprint, and it was reprinted again in Next Destinies. So it seems the design team was adamant about building a standard format with double colorless energy as a known resource for the cards they were printing. Essentially, Mewtwo EX and double colorless energy was an intended combo. Mewtwo EX was a dominant force in the game immediately upon release. Not only was X-Ball powerful in the early game, but it grew more powerful as the game went on as well, since X-Ball scales damage with energy cards attached to both players' active Pokémon. 
Popular pre-evolution Pokemon like Yanma, Tepig, and Fampi were at risk of being picked off by Mewtwo EX on turn 1 with a combination of double colorless energy, Pokemon Catcher, and plus powers, especially if the defending Pokemon had an energy attached. By the way, Pokemon Catcher had not received an Arati yet, so you did not need to flip a coin to use its effect successfully. Popular attacking Pokemon like Zekrom and Landorus were likely to be KO'd by Mewtwo EX if they had the energy required to use their most powerful attacks. The meta warped around Mewtwo EX, favoring attackers that had low energy costs like Donphan Prime and Yanmega Prime, and Pokemon which removed energy from themselves after attacking, such as Tornadus and Reshiram. Using PTCG Legends as a resource, we can see that the Heart Gold through Next Destiny's format had a wide selection of decks that were played at this time, but if you look closely, you'll find that Mewtwo EX was finding its way into most deck lists. Donphan decks became Donphan Mewtwo decks. Zekrom Electric decks played more Mewtwo EXs than it did Zekroms, and even the truth was optimally played with at least one Mewtwo EX included. Mewtwo's invasion on standard format might seem like any other time a new mechanic was released and one card was stronger than the rest for a while. In my opinion, the main factor that caused this time to be different was Mewtwo EX's weakness, which was its own type, Psychic. Mewtwo EX's strongest counter was itself, so if you wanted to counter Mewtwo, you would play Mewtwo. Along the way, this created very one-dimensional gameplay, deck building, and metagaming. Fast forward to August 2012 for the World Championships. One more set had been released between Next Destiny and Worlds, which was Dark Explorers. This new set included Dark Rai EX, which was somewhere around the same power level as Mewtwo EX, but did not cause the same corruption, since Dark Rai EX was not weak to itself such as Mewtwo EX was, and it did not have an attack that scaled as the game went on. The metagame of Top 32 for the Masters Division of Worlds 2012 consisted of 43% Darkrai Mewtwo, 12% Celebi Mewtwo Tornadus, 6% Mewtwo Electric, 6% Magnabor, which typically contained at least one Mewtwo EX, 3% Zekrami Electric, which typically contained multiple Mewtwo EX, and 3% Mewtwo Terrakion. This left two archetypes that did not play Mewtwo EX. Turbo Darkrai, and Chandelure Excelgor. Exactly 75% of the top 32 decks included at least one Mewtwo EX. Mewtwo EX Darkrai EX was piloted to 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th place that year at the World Championships in the Masters Division, while Mewtwo Eels won the Senior Division and Mewtwo Terrakion won the Junior Division. On the screen now is Igor Costa's Champion deck list. You'll notice that this deck features exactly zero evolution Pokemon, which isn't out of the ordinary, but what if I told you that the 12 top finishing decks at Worlds were basic Pokemon only? And out of the top 32, only 8 of the decks used any evolution Pokemon at all. This was a drastic shift from just one year prior when every deck in the top 32 of Worlds 2011 included evolution Pokemon. As mentioned earlier, this is not all Mewtwo's fault since Creatures Inc. were making overall shifts in their design philosophies, but I venture to assume that without Mewtwo EX, this shift in how the game was played would have never been as volatile as it was. If you could believe it, the game began to heal rather quickly with a more diverse metagame and more evolution Pokemon being utilized by the following World Championships in 2013. The top four in the 2013 Masters Division included four different archetypes. Dustin Zimmerman's Hover Toxin deck, which was a control deck built around Sableye and Garbodor. James Good's Blastoise Keldeo deck featuring Black Kyurem EX. Simon the Rhodes Team Plasma Box featuring Deoxys EX, Thunderous EX, and Lugia EX. And Jason Klazinski's Darkrai Sableye deck, which focused on aggression with Darkrai and Splash Disruption in with trainer cards like Enhanced Hammer and Hypnotoxic Laser. Mewtwo EX had been power crept out of the metagame that quickly, which was good for the diversity of the decks and cards being played, but was dangerous for the card design since the easiest way to power creep out a big basic Pokemon was to make stronger big basic Pokemon. 
big basic Pokemon would continue leading the game for a few years, until a healthy mix of basic stage 1 and stage 2 attackers truly returned with the advent of GX Pokemon in the Sun and Moon era. Was Mewtwo EX really the bad guy, or did the shift in card design get pinned on this card as the scapegoat for players to complain about? Would you have banned Mewtwo EX surrounding the 2012 World Championships format? Was it a mistake to make Mewtwo EX weak to itself? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.